Hey guys, what's going on? This is Kiel Dyken. In today's review, we're just going to kind of cover and talk about a few of the updates coming to the retro gaming community. Um, last night, I believe a few of you guys asked me what was going on with the Sending Light Gun, uh, the Supreme Pi image for the Sending Light Gun, and some of the other things that I've been working on. Uh, we're going to get into that review because I want to keep you guys up to date. And I know it's been about a month now since I've really covered it. And honestly, I really didn't want to cover it until I actually had the gun to test it out. But we're going to talk about that today. So uh, just sit back and we're going to get into this right now. Alright, so first and foremost, uh, what's going on with the Sending Light Gun? Uh, apparently, I think it was lost in the mail or it was held up in customs. I know I spoke to Andy uh, a few weeks ago and um, I do have a tracking number for it and I don't think it left the country um, where it originates from. So I have no idea what's going on with that. I've almost been checking it every day and I have not seen any uh, hide nor hair of it. I even called the US uh, Postal Service. Um, they said it's not even stateside as of right now. So um, of course, uh, there's not gonna be anything released until I can officially test it. Uh, yes, everything has been loaded on Supreme Ultra, especially with the uh, Pi light gun image I have uh, already worked on. And that's currently what you guys are looking at right now. Uh, there's roughly about 140 games on this. It also has the Supreme, uh, the Marquee script, uh, Pi Marquee script three are in here as well. But of course, we're not gonna release anything until everything has been officially tested. Um, with that being said, uh, there's some additional updates coming down the pipeline for Supreme and also the uh, RetroPie community. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's some additional things I wanted to test uh, with the light gun as well. Um, as you guys know, I have a number of Kronos devices. I have the Kronos Zen, I have the Kronos Max, and I also have the Titan II controller adapter as well. For those of you guys who haven't watched any of my other videos, make sure you check out my tutorials on those. But essentially that allows you to use any controller you want on any console. It also has different scripts and macros. You can record gameplay and then uh, through your controller and then record it and then have the controller do whatever it is you want it to. And then of course it also has different aim assist and other abilities you can use for other games. But uh, one of the things that I've been endeavoring to do is to try the sending light gun and get it to work with games such as Fortnite, Call of Duty, and some of the other games that are out there. I'm really surprised nobody else has really pushed the margin, uh, considering that the sending light gun works as a mouse and uh, it already has a lot of those features built in. I'm pretty sure on a 95% scale, it will work. I can get it to work. So I just definitely wanted to make sure I could test that out and showcase that for you guys uh, on my channel. Um, it already has a D-pad. It has several buttons on there. Um, of course, as far as moving around, I probably have to use a controller or a keyboard. But one of the things that I've always been and ever to do or interested to do uh, in the community is push the edge of technology and think outside of the box as far as what are some other applications uh, we can uh, do with that. And so with that being said, yes, I mean, there is the strong possibility that, yeah, you can play Call of Duty Fortnite and several other uh, first person shooters with this game because I can adapt the mouse sensitivity and controller settings of the gun uh, to a, either a console or a PC. But of course, uh, I don't have the gun yet. Um, I did speak to Andy. He is shipping out another one when another batch is ready. So I will keep you guys up to date uh, when that does roll out. Um, in addition to that, there was another update recently with the Sending Light Gun. Uh, there was an update 1.0.3, and uh, there was an update, and then there were some also some notes here uh, that was listed here on the website. Uh, it says, a Windows application may give an error when you load it without a light gun connected. Uh, LED projector did not work as fit for purpose on an LED 
projector. Currently, the recommendation is you need a lamp projector or maybe a laser projector. Uh, laser has been untested. The advice was always that it didn't work very well with cheap budget projectors. The guidance is now clarified to say avoid LED projectors for now. Um, there's some additional notes here. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can read this. Um, but there's some additional notes here that says the CRT screen. One user was finding the video feed of their CRT screen was flickering too much for the light gun to work. It did work with the CRT TV we previously tested. Still trying to understand what the differences are to give a clear guidance or identify a solution. So just so you guys know, not every TV, not every CR TV is created equal. Um, for all of you guys who are familiar with either gaming and also um, using different TVs, uh, one of the things that could present a problem for light guns or different settings for TVs, even if you're using an aim track or even if you are using the Dolphin Bar, uh, every TV and every monitor you use has a, a hertz rate or a refresh rate. Uh, most TVs are defaulted to about 60 hertz. Uh, the current 4K TV that I'm using is 120. And then, of course, if you guys are using the gamer monitors like Asus and some of the other ones that are out there on the market, uh, those go all the way up to 144 hertz and 240. And then now I think you have the what the 3 310 325 hertz monitors. If you guys are using any of those monitors, you will have a difference with the sending light gun. I can promise you that. Um, now, in order to access those Hertz or the refresh rate on those monitors, typically you have to use either a DVI connection or a display port. Uh, unfortunately, even the new gaming consoles that are coming out uh, aren't display port oriented, so they're not gonna be able to touch in and act access uh, those specific refresh rates. But those refresh rates will have a significant impact and a difference or uh, you will give you a different experience uh, for your light gun, uh, whether it's a sending light gun or whatever other piece of technology uh, that you guys are using. So there will have to be a lot of troubleshooting there. Um, I don't know, I believe I heard some rumblings or some talks about uh, that was also going on with RK one up and the sending light gun um, as well as far as the big bug hunter. Um, I do know on a, on a side note that Neo Geo, that SVEX, uh, cab cabinet that everybody's been testing uh, that they had some refresh rates uh, uh, with their menu as well that has nothing to do with light gun I'm just making mention of that but um, as far as the emulators and everything that are concerned uh, the emulators do work at a specific refresh rate so you guys will have to check all of your settings when using your sending light gun to make sure everything is running appropriately um, but finally over here we do have uh, another Raspberry Pi 4 update. This is the one that we've all been waiting for. It's been talked about in the community. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi 4 higher quality uh, Vulcan support with Mesa drivers. So this will allow everything to be fully unlocked for the most part on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is why Supreme Ultra has been delayed. Uh, with this update, I think this update may be coming out around December 1st. I think, I'm, I'm guessing, I believe it's hopefully gonna be ready somewhere around that time. Uh, one of the things that uh, the community didn't wanna do is push out another build and then try to add in additional updates with, you know, when you can just go ahead and provide everything you need for the community. So what will this do? Yes, this will allow your uh, Sega Saturn, this will allow your N64 and everything to run perfectly, perfectly flawlessly without any hiccups, without any issues. I do know several of the people in the community have been testing this and everything. In fact, you can read the notes here as well. A lot of people have been testing this already. Um, it's still in its beta stages and uh, it's been really running really good. So that is something uh, definitely we're gonna be looking forward to. I do have a number of uh, Sega Saturn games included on my light gun image and I do believe that there's some other people out there in the community that have some as well uh, the only problem with some of the Sega games that I've experienced and I'm not sure if the Mesa drivers will fix that as um, uh, House of the Dead works but the sound doesn't work um, we, we played around with it don't even know exactly what the sound is uh, virtual cop and virtual cop 2 they run but they run a little bit uh, slower 
So the Vulcan updates will take care of that as well as some of the other updates that are on here as well. Uh, this game Scud right here, this game runs perfectly fine. No issues there. So uh, that's been the delay guys. That's what's been going on. And again, I'm trying not to put out a bunch of videos while uh, on a particular topic when I can cover it when I have all the equipment, which is why you guys haven't heard anything in about a month about uh, Supreme Ultra or the Sending Light Gun. So uh, you guys do have it. All the updates are here. And then of course, I am going to test this with the Chrono Zen and I'm also going to test this with the Max and probably uh, the uh, Titan 2 as well because I want to push technology to the brink and see exactly what we could really get out of it. And like I said, I believe there is a 95% chance I can get it working with games like Fortnite, Call of Duty, or other first person games out there. If you guys choose to, you know, use it in that manner. But I'm really curious to see uh, how it will work in getting it implemented to work. Um, I, on paper, everything looks fine. I don't see an issue with it, but of course, it's technology. You always wanna test something and make sure it's fully working. Uh, when you're plugging it in. So um, again, guys, this is Kiel Dykin. Consider subscribing to the channel. Make sure you guys share this video. Uh, drop a line in the comment section below. I'll try to bring some more updates to you if I hear anything coming down the pipelines, but uh, that's been what it is right now. Uh, we're waiting for the uh, Vulcan support drivers for Mesa, which will fully perfect everything and give the Pi 4 uh, full graphic support. And then, of course, um, I don't think I've uh, updated the Sending Light Gun as of yet, but uh, this is something else we're going to test here is the CRT capability uh, to test different refresh rates because that will be a concern, and that's why uh, some people in the community have reported issues with uh, different screens and whatnot. So, yeah, you will have that with your refresh rate. And then, of course, uh, I want to make sure I test it with some other things and give you guys the best optimal experience and overall experience you guys can get with new technology coming out so hope you guys consider subscribing to the channel i'll catch you guys later you guys have a good day